Jupiter, the giant of the solar system, has been known to man since ancient times. As a brightly shining point, it traces its orbits across the night sky. For a long time, researchers thought they had found out everything about this planet. But then Jupiter surprises again and again with even more violent storms, an ocean of metals, and a hostile behavior that could be our undoing. Come along on this journey to the largest and most dangerous planet in the solar system. Jupiter, mystery of gas and dust. Even in ancient times, Jupiter was a figure of contention. As Lord of Olympus, he was the father of the gods in Roman mythology. Sometimes benevolent and wise, sometimes devious and angry, the chief of all gods stepped into the ring. It almost seems as if the astronomers of antiquity had a secret idea about the true nature of this celestial body. In ancient times, astronomers knew nothing about planets. They saw in Jupiter and the other planets visible to the naked eye an unusual star. Only in the present day does the planet's uncanny resemblance to the capricious father of the gods reveal itself. Jupiter has long been considered a benefactor, a cozy large planet whose gravity binds the solar system's numerous asteroids and comets in a stable belt between it and Mars. Thanks to the main asteroid belt, we are reasonably safe from the projectiles from space. At least that's what researchers thought for a long time. That this was a mistake, we will show you shortly. Jupiter is by far the largest planet in the solar system. If we were to put all the other planets on the scale together, Jupiter would still be quite a bit heavier. Some researchers are convinced that Jupiter almost became a star. Only a little more was missing. Then Jupiter would have initiated fusion processes by its gravity as they take place on our Sun. Instead of a giant planet in the neighborhood, we would then have a second star. As the oldest planet in the solar system, it formed from the amount of gas and dust that did not become part of the Sun. Today, the star giant is composed mainly of gases such as hydrogen, helium, and dust. An Ocean of Metal Hydrogen makes up about 90% of the planet's composition. In the outer layers of this gas giant, hydrogen is a colorless and transparent gas, just like on Earth. In the deeper layers, the atmospheric pressure increases immensely and the hydrogen condenses to a bizarre liquid, which resembles liquid metal. This ocean of metallic hydrogen makes up about 10% of the inner areas of the planet. Liquid metallic hydrogen has properties similar to water, excellent electrical conductivity, and heat conduction. This bizarre substance turns Jupiter into a giant generator. On Earth, hydrogen can be artificially compressed in the laboratory to such an extent that it becomes a solid. However, hydrogen does not become metallic with us as a result and conducts heat and electricity poorly. Deep in Jupiter's layers, hydrogen is exposed to such extreme temperatures and pressures that it becomes liquid and metallic. This fact fascinates planetary scientists, and they would love to know firsthand what is going on inside the planet. The data that are available come from scans by the Juno space probe. It can penetrate deep into Jupiter's layers with its measuring instruments and measure detailed information about gases, elements, and temperatures. Scientists will probably never visit the ocean of liquid metallic hydrogen directly. Even if we eventually mastered space travel, we would have to stay away from the planets like Jupiter. The extreme gravity would magically attract a spacecraft at a certain threshold and then tear it apart inside the planet. Because of the large amounts of liquid metal at a depth of about 40,000 kilometers and its rapid rotation, Jupiter generates a colossal magnetic field that extends over an astonishing distance of 725 million kilometers. This magnetic field is the largest in our solar system and holds secrets of its own. Jupiter's magnetic field is 20,000 times stronger than Earth's and extends all the way to Jupiter's neighbor Saturn. The massive magnetic field is responsible for spectacular auroras at the poles of the gas giant and creates a mystery known as the Great Blue Spot. The fairly recently discovered magnetic anomaly near the gas giant's equator is not a storm, like the much better known and larger Red Spot, but a region with a particularly intense magnetic field. Unlike Earth's dipolar magnetic field, which consists of a north and south pole, Jupiter's magnetic field has a much more complex structure. The Great Blue Spot could be considered a kind of second magnetic south pole near the equator. The intensity of the magnetic field in this region 
varies by up to 1% annually, strengthening and weakening in different areas. Although the nature of the Great Blue Spot is completely different from that of the Great Red Spot, the two phenomena may have a complex connection in the overall structure of the planet because they lie at similar latitudes. At the moment, the Great Blue Spot is still the subject of current scientific investigation. The Great Cold Spot The gas giant Jupiter also has other spots. Scientists refer to a spot that extends about 12,000 by 24,000 kilometers as the Great Cold Spot. The cold spot is not a storm, nor is it directly related to the magnetic field. This fascinating atmospheric feature is a region of much colder temperatures compared to its surroundings. Colder, in this case, means a difference of about 200 degrees Celsius. In the upper layers, Jupiter's temperature is about negative 145 degrees Celsius. Deeper, the pressure increases so massively that temperatures also probably rise to 20,000 degrees Celsius or even higher. The great cold spot on Jupiter is located in the planet's thermosphere, where temperatures are usually around 800 degrees Celsius. Around the spot, temperatures plummet to about 600 degrees. The great cold spot is unstable and appears only intermittently. Since it's always accompanied by the appearance of auroras, there is probably a connection. Jupiter's auroras are formed similarly to ours on Earth when charged particles from the solar winds interact with the magnetic field and atmosphere of the planet pole. On Jupiter, the auroras are more stable and intense because they are enhanced by particles originating from the planet's moons. New evidence shows that the intense auroras transfer energy to Jupiter's atmosphere and create a temperature difference between the upper and lower regions. This temperature difference leads to the formation of the swirling vortex known as the cold spot. Water on Jupiter Water vapor was first detected on Jupiter in 1995 by the Galileo spacecraft. The near-infrared mapping spectrometer aboard Galileo recorded the fine water vapor in the planet's atmosphere during their close flyby. Recent data show that water makes up about 0.25% of Jupiter's atmosphere directly above the equator. While that may not seem like much, it's an immense amount of water when measured against the planet's massive size. In recent years, a team of researchers used telescope data to discover an even greater amount of water in Jupiter's famous Great Red Spot. The Juno spacecraft, launched in 2012, confirmed the water findings in the gas giant's clouds. The water creates flashes that are hundreds of times brighter than terrestrial ones. The process is much like ours on Earth. When water droplets and ice crystals collide in clouds, they create electrical charges. When these charges become strong enough, lightning is produced. In the past, researchers discovered lightning in Jupiter's atmosphere, where water droplets collide with electrically charged ice particles. Juno then recorded more water discoveries in the higher atmospheric layers. There, where temperatures drop to about negative 87 degrees Celsius, it's actually much too cold for liquid water. Nevertheless, it flashes faintly there too. The answer to the puzzle lies in a small amount of ammonia in Jupiter's atmosphere, which serves as a natural antifreeze. In the upper atmosphere, water ice crystals combine with ammonia vapors and melt. These water ammonia droplets then collide with more ice crystals from below creating an electrical charge that discharges in lightning bolts. Under the ammonia ice clouds, the ammonia water droplets even grow so continuously that they become large hailstones. Jupiter and the Asteroids Reconstructions of the evolution of our solar system have shown that Jupiter's influence has been instrumental in stabilizing the orbits of many planets. Its gravity has bound numerous asteroids and comets, so that impacts in the inner solar system have decreased enormously over millions of years. In the past, astronomers have even suggested that this was one of the reasons life had a chance on Earth. But recent findings cast doubt on Jupiter's role as a terrestrial protector. Long-period comets, which originate in the distant regions of the solar system and take millennia to orbit the Sun, would also pass by us if Jupiter's gravitational influence did not hurl them out of the solar system even before they approach Earth. The chances of long-period comets colliding with our planet are therefore extremely rare, occurring over millions or even tens of millions of years. Jupiter's presence thus plays a crucial role in protecting Earth from these potential impacts. However, the gas giant's gravitational forces have both positive and negative effects. 
On the one hand, its immense gravity prevents nearby space rocks from accumulating and forming into a planet. Instead, thousands of asteroids, smaller rocks, and comets fly secured in a broad band between Mars and Jupiter. Not so long ago, however, astronomers discovered that at certain times, the gas giant's gravitational pull can also change so that it virtually pushes asteroids out of the belt and hurls them in our direction. Almost in such a way as Jupiter, the god of thunder and lightning, brought his bad mood or vengefulness over the people, then also the planet Jupiter behaves. The asteroids set in motion in this way do not necessarily have to collide with the Earth, but collisions with the Earth increase in probability. In 1770, Comet Lexil passed Earth by only about 1.5 million kilometers. On the astronomical scale, that's actually a short distance. Scientists believe that the comet originally came from the outermost reaches of the solar system and came close to the gas giant during its flight. It was deflected by its gravity and hurled directly towards Earth. After completing two orbits around the Sun, the comet returned to Jupiter's vicinity nine years later and this time was ejected from it out of the solar system. Jupiter's gravity could cause more problems in the future. It's probably its influence that is causing the smallest planet, Mercury, to move into an increasingly oblique orbit, and at some point, it will probably be pushed into the Sun by the tremendous force of the gas giant. So, Jupiter is both a curse and a blessing, or just the way it is. Planets certainly have no evil intentions in what they do. Do you find Jupiter threatening now, or is it simply a fascinating celestial body for you?